Well, week one of the NFL season came to a close last night in San Francisco as the Jets and the Jets fans waited a long time for last night to see Aaron Rodgers and they got their ass whooped is what happened. They got their ass whooped in San Francisco by a better team. I didn't expect them to win. Most people didn't pick them to win, right? You didn't think they were going to beat the the 49ers, but you expected it to be more competitive than it was. Um, Aaron Rodgers was rusty, just like Brian Costello had told us a week before that he looks great in practice, but practice is not the game, right? It's a different animal. When you get out there, live speed, game speed, regular season speed, it's a different type of thing than in practice or even in the preseason if you were to play in the preseason. And the Jets were, they were off last night. Uh, there was a couple things that, that are concerning. I wouldn't be too concerned about Rodgers, right? I think he's going to be okay. The, the touchdown pass that he threw was a beautiful throw. He got them to jump off size, and he threw it right down the, down the seam, and he put it, placed it perfectly through a couple good throws. You see that, you know, Rodgers is going to be okay. The Jets' defense that's supposed to be this all-world defense was, did not look all-world. And San Francisco was playing without their best offensive player, Christian McCaffrey. I mean, they gave up 147 yards to Jordan Mason. That's a guy, most people never even heard of him. Jordan Mason went for, what do you go for here? 147 rushing yards. This vaunted Jets defense that's supposed to be, you know, one of the top defenses in the league, a a championship level defense. And they got burned. Brock Purdy was... Was okay yesterday. He wasn't great either. He didn't throw any touchdowns. He didn't throw any picks either. But the defense, they went up and down the field. San Francisco scored after their first possession, scored on eight consecutive possessions. Either a field goal or a touchdown. Now you can give the Jets a little bit of credit. They held them to field goals. Six field goals. There were two kickers that kicked six field goals this week to open the season. And that's out of San Francisco record. Jake Moody, six field goals. He hit one from 46, 51, 31, 53, 23, and 42. One of them hit off the, the left upright and went in. That was right before the half. I think that was right before the half. And speaking of right before the half, you had, you had Sauce Gardner, who's an all-world, generational, future Hall of Famer. They were already picking out, sizing out his yellow jacket his gold jacket, and he was on the sideline for nine straight plays at the end of the half while San Francisco was driving into the Jets' red zone. Now, the Jets held them to a field goal. Okay, not terrible, but there were a couple big plays there, and what is Sauce Gardner doing on the the sideline for nine plays? They said uh, he was catching his breath. It sounds like he got the wind knocked out of him, but nine plays is a lot. Like, you get the wind knocked out of you. Everyone's had the wind knocked out of them before, right? You know, it's, it's bad. Don't, don't get me wrong. It hurts like hell. And you can't catch your breath. But it's, it's two minutes, usually, and it's gone. Nine plays is a long time. And I'm not sure if the Jets had any timeouts left, but I would have almost called the timeout. Or, you, you know, if there's an incomplete pass, call a timeout, get, regroup, get your best player on the field to try and stop them from going into the end zone. Because, and now, like I said, they held them to a field goal, so it wasn't really the end of the world. Sala, not another, another not great game by, by Robert Sala. And he's going to probably hold, hold this team back at some point. Because he's just, he, I mean, this is, he's a defensive coach, first of all. And you got the team, now granted, one of the best team, offensive teams in the league, scoring on eight consecutive possessions. Yeah, they might be one of the best offensive teams in the league, but early in the season, week one, the offenses are usually behind the defenses. The defenses are usually more ready, game ready, season ready than the offenses are. Takes them a couple weeks to start clicking. Well, San Francisco was clicking right off the bat. And the score was, is you know, 32-19 was the final. It, it wasn't even that close because Tyrod Taylor came in, you know, in the last couple minutes and put, and put the ball in the end zone for the Jets. Now, I guess the, the big thing is, you know, no injury to Aaron Rodgers. He made it past the fourth play. So that's, that's a plus. The, you know, the Jets season didn't crumble in the first three hours of it. You know, last year it took 10 minutes, and this year it made it through the first week. And the Jets schedule also gets easier going forward. 
So, you know, it's not terrible that they lost this game, but there is some alarming things about how they lost the game. It gets a lot easier. They go to Tennessee next week. Then they're home to the Pats, home to the Broncos in Minnesota, home to the Bills, and at Pittsburgh. Those are the next six games, six weeks for the Jets. They have a short week going into the Pats game, into their home opener after this week. So they play the Titans in Tennessee on Sunday, and then they have the short week Thursday into the Pats. And listen, I mean, if for some reason they, they lose to Tennessee, which they shouldn't at all, but if for some reason they lose to Tennessee, then you could start to get a little bit worried. The Jets, the, the defense gave up. The San Francisco was running the ball up, down their throat the whole game. That, I mean, without Christian McCaffrey, for them to have a running game like that, and the Jets didn't have much of a running game. We saw it 16 carries for 54 yards and a touchdown. Now, granted, they weren't running the ball much because they were behind. You know, they were behind. They were behind big, pretty much. They were up 7-6, and then it was just, it was all San Francisco from the late second quarter into the, into the middle of the fourth quarter. The interception that that... Rodgers threw was not really his fault. It wasn't a good throw, but it was tipped around and then it was intercepted. So you give him a, a, a pass on that. But listen, the Jets didn't play well, right? And I, it's expected to come from Rodgers because, you know, he, he was a, he's 40 years old. He's a year plus without playing in a real game besides the four plays last year. He didn't play any preseason. He played in the scrimmages. And, he, and you heard Brian Costello right here say that there were times in practice, there were whole practices where the ball didn't hit the ground. Well, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't that yesterday. And, and the big elephant in the room, of course, now he lost $800,000 last night. He lost a game check, Hassan Reddick. Missing yesterday's game cost him $800,000 on top of already about a million plus in fines for not showing up to training camp and practices and, and whatnot. But this is a big negotiating tool that he can use. It's a chip and hit on his side because now the Jets who have been saying for the last three weeks, we don't need you. We got this defense, this great defense. We don't need you. You would just be, you know, throwing, throwing on the pile of greatness that is on this defense. Well, it wasn't so great last night. San Francisco ran the ball down the Jets throat with a, a known, a guy you've never heard of. If it was Christian McCaffrey, maybe you'd be a little okay. Listen, it was Christian McCaffrey. You know, he's an old, he's a great, great player. It wasn't. It was Jordan Mason. The Jets also didn't respond very well to to the motion, and they didn't seem as prepared as they should have been. San Francisco ran motion on ninety percent of the plays, sixty-two of sixty-nine plays. They ran pre-snap motion, had a man in motion across the the formation, and it worked. That's, that's 90% of the plays. The Jets didn't seem like they were prepared for that. A defensive head coach, Robert Sala. Now, I guess we're not killing Hackett today. There was no terrible play, play call, so I guess that's a plus. Hackett made it through unscathed. Rodgers made it through healthy. I don't know why. Sauce Gardner was on the sideline, but they, they got through that too because it was only a field goal. But the Jets were never really, from the mid-second quarter, once San Francisco took the 13-7 to lead, the Jets were never heard from again. You had Rodgers throw the one touchdown. That was a real pretty pass. You know, he, he caught him. He had a free play. He threw it down the, down the field. And it was, a, you know, he, he dropped it right in the bucket for the touchdown. But besides that, it wasn't good. I mean, th does, you know, an Aaron Rodgers... They sound like 13 for 21, 167 yards, one touchdown and one interception. That doesn't sound like Aaron Rodgers. That sounds more like Daniel Jones. Except it wouldn't be the touchdown because the Giants don't score touchdowns. But give I'm not too worried about Rodgers. Rodgers will be okay. I would be worried about the defense. And I think the Jets have to get Hassan Reddick in here now this week. You have to. You have no choice. Because when you're playing the better teams, you're not, the defense isn't as good as you think it is. 
Now, if he doesn't play next week against Tennessee, they might dominate Tennessee and they might hold them, you know, a bunch of sacks. And they got no pressure on Purdy last night. None whatsoever. And that's alarming in itself because all you heard about was how great this, this front four is going to be and how they're going to get to the quarterback. Well, they didn't get to the quarterback. They had three sacks, but... You know, as far other than that, they weren't getting, they weren't pressuring him, they weren't guys in his face, you know, making it uncomfortable for Purdy. And Purdy's still a kid. He played better than Aaron Rodgers did. Now he had a better team, but he didn't have his one guy, Christian McCaffrey, there. And he still outshined Aaron Rodgers against this supposedly vaunted Jets defense, championship level defense. With a, with a defensive head coach. So it's, is it, it's, not, it's nowhere near as bad as the Giants. Don't get me wrong. The, the Giants are a disaster. That, that whole thing is a mess. But the Jets, not what, they, not what you wanted to see. You know, they lose this game 32-28. You're okay with it. But 32-19 and one of them was a garbage time touchdown. It was really 32 to, to 13 was the final, really. Tyrod Taylor coming in, stuck it in the end zone. It's not, not really, you know, that don't count. They gave up 32 points. The Jets defense did. And that's big. And, and you know what, Hassan Reddick, he's going to be in there. He's going to have Drew Rosenhaus or whoever his agent is sitting there telling the Jets, look what you did. Maybe you do need my guy. Maybe you can meet this number now that we're asking for. Because look what happened. It wasn't as good as you thought it was going to be. The Jets went out there and gave up 10 points and won the game, you know, 21-10. They would have the bargaining chip. But now it's in her, the, the momentum in the negotiations are in Hassan Reddick's side because the Jets didn't look too good last night. And he's, a, and he's an all, you know, he's a all pro, go after, get after the quarterback type of player. He's a down lineman. He's gonna get, that's his job. Just get the quarterback. Go get the quarterback. And he's very, very good at it. So last night might have cost Hassan Reddick an $800,000 game check, but it might end up in the long run making him money. And the Jets got to get him back. And you got to get him back this week because you, got, you want him to play a couple games before you play the Bills and the Dolphins and teams like that that are, that are good top-level teams. They might be all right without him against the Titans and against the Pats. Although, I, listen, the Pats beat beat Cincinnati, right? And Cincinnati's got some issues of its own with holdouts and, and star players and everything not coming and not playing. But they still held them to 10 points, and they played well. But I don't, I, you know, week one is just, it's all over the place. Really, you can't really judge much on week one, and you don't want to judge much. But like I said, with the, when it's a defensive issue, the defenses early in the NFL season are almost always ahead of the offenses just because, you know, there's not as much precision and stuff like that. Like, offense is just a very preci- precise type of, you know, you're running routes, you got to get your timing down and everything. Defense is cover the guy, cover your area, or go get the quarterback. And that's a lot easier to get into, you know, get into a groove than it is with, with running precise routes and timing patterns and, and motion and everything like that, that, that the offense has to deal with. But the 49ers had no issue. Like I said, they used motion and you could count on, you could take it to the bank that other teams are going to notice that, that the jets got a little confused when men go in motion across the formation, you bring a wide receiver in motion. They 62 of 69 plays. The Niners used pre-snap motion and they scored 32 points. And they ran the ball all over the Jets. Mike Williams, another, another uh, he only played nine snaps. You know, the Jets brought in Mike Williams. He's got a big wide receiver. It's a big target for, for uh, Rodgers. And, I, you know, he's coming off the injury, and he came in, and he didn't play the whole. He wasn't available all of training camp, so he's still kind of in, working into game shape. Nine snaps, no targets. Lazard had a decent game. He dropped the pass in that first, the first possession. 
He ended up with six catches, but you know, not not really the game breaking plays that you wanted to see. Jets didn't have any. The Jets had one, you know, deep downfield game breaking type of play, and it was the touchdown, and it was a free play because San Francisco jumped off sides. So that's just kind of a, a everybody go deep. Rogers is going to find somebody because it's a free play. And he's famous for that. You know, he draws them off sides and he get, you know, he capitalizes on the free plays. So Rogers, don't be worried about Rogers. He's going to be okay. Is he going to be the Rogers from six years ago? No, but he, we didn't expect that. He doesn't have to be that. That's an all time Rogers. It's an all time quarterback. You're going to get a great quarterback, not an all-time quarterback. And a great quarterback should be good enough with all this talent. But the big glaring thing yesterday is it looks like the Jets were wrong when they were saying, we don't need Hassan Reddick. He would just be extra, you know, topping on what we already got, making our defense even greater. Well, no, no, it didn't look like a great defense. 32 points, giving up all those rushing yards, just... You know, scoring drives on eight consecutive possessions. Great defenses, the Bears, the 85 Bears, the, the mid-80s, 90, mid-80s and 90, early 90s Giants, the 2000 Ravens. They didn't give up eight possessions straight with points. They barely gave up eight possessions with points in three games. And Salah being a defensive coach, Got to be better. They got to be better. And Rodgers knows it. Rodgers going to, you know, he's going to work on it. But the offense will come around. They'll start to click. They'll get the timing down. The defense is something to worry about. And they head to Tennessee this Sunday and then follow that with a short week, a Thursday game against the Pats, the home opener. And then it's Broncos, Vikings, Bills, Steelers. So it should be easy. Listen, the Jets should win. They should win four of those six games, five of those six games. They should win five of those six games, which would put them at five and two, and you'd be okay. Then you forget about what just happened last night and the, and the fact that you got your ass kicked in San Francisco on opening night. They're the defending NFC champions. They went to the Super Bowl last year. It was, was going to be a tough game either way. So you take it, you learn from it, you move on, and you got to be better prepared. Salah's got to get this team better prepared. That's his defense. That's his baby. He's a defensive coach. And he's already not in the good graces of Jets fans. I think he's 19-41 and over whatever it is, three years or whatever. He's been the coach. What you saw last night from San Francisco is what the Jets strive to be. An offensive putting up 30-plus points. A defense stopping, t- stopping, making stops when they need to make stops. Get off the field. The Niners ran 70 total plays to the Jets' 49. Now, give the offensive line credit. The Jets' offensive line did protect Rodgers. He, he wasn't under much duress. It was one sack. It was he went down twice. He got he didn't really get hit hard, but he did get hit. So the time of possession, all all 49ers, because they they carried the, the possession. They they ran the ball. They averaged almost six yards a play. 180 rushing yards to the Jets 68. The Jets defense gave up 400 yards of offense last night to the to the Niners. 220 in the air, 180 on the ground. And the time of possession, thir- over almost 40 minutes for the, for the 49ers and only 20 minutes for the Jets. There was, it was a pretty clean game, only the, the, one, the two turnovers, both by the Jets. The fumble on the, first, on the first drive, was it? The fumble on the first drive, and then the Rodgers pick where it was tipped around and intercepted. And that was a big turning point. That was kind of where it was like, okay, it's not going to happen. They got the ball back. The Jets did stop, uh, you know, they kicked a field goal, but then the Jets got the ball back and they scored a touchdown, but it was too little too late. So the Jets are 0-1. The Giants are 0-1. A rough start for New York football, but a predictable start. Giants, mess, complete disaster. The Jets, I think the Jets are going to be okay. 
They're going to have to listen. You can't go into Tennessee and lose, right? Then you're in big trouble. Then the, the questions are going to really start to swirl. Go into t- Tennessee, take care of business, then beat the Pats on Thursday, beat the Broncos. You'll be three and one and you'll be in good shape and you'll forget that this game ever happened. Make it a learning experience. Jets lose 32 19. Rodgers didn't get hurt, right? So it's not a disaster. He made it through. He survived a game. The Jet, the Aaron Rodgers Jets era as quarterback has officially begun. They got to get the defense and you got to get Hassan Reddick signed. And they play Tennessee, one o'clock on Sunday. That does it for us, everybody. Remember, you could catch us anywhere podcasts are, anywhere you get your podcasts. YouTube, we are on. We are on all social medias, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, uh, X, all of them. So, and you could always get us at lockedupsports.net, lockedupsports.net.